In this video, I'm going to transform this popular stereo cabinet from the 80s and 90s and talk about some of the different options you have to transform your own furniture. Glass doors and particle board, solid oak trim and laminated wood. I see a light and a cord. Condition is pretty good. Filled with music, Games in power. Lots of people used it. Hopefully not in the shower. So we'll make it nice. Maybe not quite new. But I hope you enjoy it when we are through. This stereo cabinet, I believe, was made in the 90s based on the LED light found in it. But these types of cabinets have been around for years. The construction of this cabinet is particle board with laminate. And then there's some solid oak trim on the front. There's an LED light on the inside, so we're going to start off by removing it because it doesn't work anymore. Next up, we're gonna start as we always do by giving this cabinet a thorough cleaning. And I'm gonna use fast 505 degreaser simply because that's what I have on hand. Any degreasing cleaner, TSP or TSP substitute will work for this. After cleaning, I used some wood filler on the bottom sides of the cabinet where I saw some bubbling happening while cleaning, and I also filled four holes at the bottom of the inside of the cabinet. Next, I removed the hardware. I wasn't able to remove the doors because they appeared to be pinned in between the cabinet during assembly. It's interesting to see how the cabinet wood has aged and darkened over time, whereas the laminate on the cabinet has gotten lighter. This next step is optional, but it will make more sense when I get to the end as to why I did it. The goal I have is to either remove the lines or to get them down so that they're smooth with the glass. I used a handled razor blade to scrape the lines and remove most of what I believe to be a powder coat. I still felt texture on the glass, so I went ahead and used wet sandpaper starting from 3000 grit and moving to 7000 grit. This was a long process and I've never attempted it on anything except for shower glass, but you need to make sure your sandpaper is wet and the substrate is wet at all times. Before you change between grits, make sure that you wipe off all the water and then you can change your grit. I also tried using paint stripper, magic eraser, and acetone to remove the lines from the glass, none of which worked. Though all my efforts didn't completely remove the lines, they were no longer orange and I couldn't feel them on the glass. At some point while working on this cabinet, I decided it was going to be a spaceship. So I started prepping it for intergalactic travel by first sanding the substrate with 150 grit sandpaper. This will give it a more aerodynamic and smooth feel. We need to ensure that there is a good seal coat on the carcass of this ship. So I used Zinzerbin shellac primer for this and I applied two coats using a roller and I sanded down the last coat so that everything was smooth. I did ask my local Ace Hardware if they would tint the primer something other than white, but they noted that they can only tint the water-based version of the primer. What sort of spaceship would this be if we didn't paint it black? I chose Cartson Millie's Black Bear paint, which is a self-sealing, self-leveling, water-resistant mineral paint. Really perfect for space travel. 
and even though the primer is white, that first coat went on really well. I ended up applying two thin coats of the paint, and then I sanded gently, and then I applied my third coat, which I watered down just a little bit. I removed the bottom inside of the cabinet from the back, painted it black, and decided it needed some alien symbols on it, so I stenciled those on using a wall stencil I had. I tried using a stencil brush, but I didn't enjoy this method so much. I don't stencil a ton, but the next time I'm probably going to try a roller out. I decided to stain the oak trim instead of painting it. I used my scraper to clean off the primer and paint and most of the finish. And once that was off, I ended up sanding off the remaining finish using 150 grit sandpaper. The reason I'm covering this is to point out that there are options. There's always options. For example, if this was a seafaring cabinet with coastal vibes. You could stain this in white or driftwood and then use a contrasting color on the laminate. All I'm saying is there's options. I use General Finish's black gel stain on the oak trim. I applied two coats, allowing it to dry before reapplying my second coat. And my reasoning behind this for using two instead of one is just because it was a bit more yellow than I wanted on the first coat, so I went in for the second coat. All spaceships need cool stripes on them. What kind of stripes? I don't really know. I'm winging this design together, but I thought it would look cool. I used Modern Masters Metallics in black to create a subtle line contrasting against the black paint. Two coats were applied and I removed the tape immediately after the second coat was applied while it was still wet. Some of the metallic paint flakes came off of the tape when I was removing it, but none of it seemed to stick to the wet paint. I 
I sealed the paint and stain using General Finish's water-based high performance top coat in flat. I applied three thin coats to the body using a sponge. For the detailed areas on the trim and on the sides, I went in and brushed the finish on. On the inside of the cabinet, I chose to use black wood grain contact paper. I'm sure someone is thinking, why not just paint it? Well, the contact paper is easier to clean, and more importantly, it's waterproof. And thinking about the other uses of this cabinet, I thought this would be a smart decision. And now's probably a good time to talk about the other options that you could use this cabinet for. I had some great suggestions in my community post prior to starting this project. One of the more obvious uses would be a glass display cabinet for collectibles. Another use mentioned was a linen cabinet. This cabinet isn't massive and it could easily fit into a moderately sized bathroom or even a closet. It could also be used for a bar cabinet or a gaming console cabinet. Just stick some 3M hooks on the inside and you can hang up your controllers or headphones on the inside. I have one more idea for you, but you're gonna have to wait. To make the cabinet space capable, we need to remove the plastic rollers. Once they're removed, I cut two pieces of scrap wood, pre-drilled holes in them, and glued and screwed them into the bottom of the cabinet. Next, I marked the holes for the new legs, I mean landing gear, and pre-drilled before finally attaching the legs. One of the second to last customizations on the cabinet that I want to show is applying non-adhesive window film. This was the reason that I went through the entire effort of removing the textured lines on the back of the glass, because it's going to interfere with not only the look of the film, but the adhesion of it. I followed the instructions that were included, but I did add a few drops of Dawn dish soap to my water, just based off of applying window films previously. There's a ton of different techniques to apply window film online, so I would encourage you to try different ways and figure out what works best for you. My only regret about applying this film to the door was that I should have cut down the sides even more before attaching it. It would have made it a lot easier. My final customization to this cabinet is to attach LED lights to the back trim inside of the cabinet. It's also time to mention my favorite idea for this cabinet. The idea is to use this cabinet to store your indoor plants to keep them away from your pets. 
I have a carnivorous cat who occasionally likes to play vegan. All you need to do is to add some cabinet plant lights and you're all set. I'll link some of the other accessories that could be useful for this cabinet in the description below if you're interested. This cabinet transformation was inspired by Miss Flips, who transformed the same cabinet. She is my hero when it comes to tape designs on furniture, and I'll link her video below in the description so that you can go there and watch it and get some more ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it helps to get your creative juices flowing. Thanks for watching.